Hi guys, Martin here, True North. We are speaking of prophetic actions and what it is. Um, last week we have seen how the prophet Elijah says in 2 Kings 13 to the, pro to the king of Israel, um, he must open his window and take a bow and arrow and shoot it to the eastward where the, his enemies um, would come from and um, then when he did that he declared the prophet declared and says this is the victory of the Lord and you remember how he had to shoot a few arrows actually he did it actually only three times and um, where the prophet was not happy with him now prophetic actions we need to understand prophetic means it's a word spoken all right and it is something from god when we say prophetic so it's not a normal word it's a spiritual word and an action is a deed that we connect to this word so instead of pray or a prayer we can do a prophetic action but i must tell you if you don't have a prayer life and are not um, belonging to God prophetic actions um, is actually worthless then it's only an action so it needs a power and the spiritual source must be God um, you know to give it energy for that to work now we have a lot of prophetic actions in the Word of God that I want to mention to you first of all when we spoke on this prophetic arrows we see that actually the arrow is you yourself the king shoot the arrow and the word was upon that arrow you will bring victory you know so um, the the symbolism of the uh, action is all about you and your life that represents something so in many cultures there is um, sometimes things that they will do to do or show a prophetic action for something to come or to show them that what happened to them you know they were blessed um, and I want just want to mention a few of these things so that we need to understand um, some churches still does that but maybe there is still that needs to understand that we have lost now first of all you need to have faith in the actions that's very important doesn't help you to do something you need to understand the revelation of that thing as well um, when you do it what it's all about and some um, maybe the first thing that I can say here is it's like tithing all right a tithe is something that came from the Old Testament before the law Abram heard this awesome story where he um, received bread and wine from Melchizedek and then he, he partook of that two things the bread and wine and that was a shadow and a type a prophetic word of something to come all right and today today when we actually um, take the bread and wine from the Lord it's past the prophetic action that the Lord did but the action of that what we do is very powerful because God says as often as you come first Corinthians 11 come together use um, this action take the bread think on me and take the blood all right so the prophetic action has many power in it and some of you do that but you don't have faith in it and um, your, your heart is not in it and your motives is not right and that's why some of you are weak and some of you are actually died 
because of your um, your heart so we can see that uh, bread and wine as a symbolism the the supper of the Lord is something practically that we do that is a prophetic action about something that went on for us tithing is exactly the same Abram came and he gave a tithe to Melchizedek about because of this awesome story that Jesus Christ will be the Son of God he will be God incarnated coming to redeem mankind by blood all right and he's offering as the gift so the moment when he paid the tithe it is when the first of the fruit is blessed everything um, further will be blessed so it is uh, also you know the uh, in the offerings or the feast of the jewish the passover and then there was the the, the feast of the sieve the first sieves that was shown before the Lord as a type of Jesus Christ will be the first brethren all right of many and that's why the second feast they had to do this took this um, corn you know and 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 wave it in the air all right as a shadow a prophetic action of something that had to come Jesus came and fulfilled that feast all the feasts but now in our message that feast all right so we have prophetic things that is most powerful so first of all we have seen that our Lord's Supper is a prophetic action and um, if you do not have belief in that it can be terrible for your spiritual life and actually for your physical life so it's a spiritual thing that's connected to a natural thing and a natural thing that's connected to a spiritual thing i started off by telling you how adam and eve sin and how god made them tunics in genesis 3 verse 18 i believe and um, to cover their sin now you cannot really cover your sin with a literal cloak but um, that was a manifestation that they need to cover because your flesh and the natural is connected to the spirit and that was also a symbolism of what the Lord Jesus Christ would come and do kill himself and then he needs to cover you with him all right so that your nakedness does not shine or shown unto mankind so we have these things that tithing and your offerings um, is always a prophetic action of what the Lord is going to do and what he did for you and then the Lord's Supper was also one of these things that we need to understand now there is many other stuff and maybe I want to read to you just um, a few things so that we need to understand and stay in the Word of God now in Acts 6 we see here that um, there were men um, took by the Apostles or people and brought to the Apostles and the Apostles lay their hands on them Acts 6 verse 6 says they presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them so it's a prophetic action of men of God to bless them all right so um, like I said it is instead of prayer um, is actions in our spiritual life that can be most powerful and then these people are separated for God's use because of the laying of hands all right so um, people think why would 
we pray and lay our hands and on somebody um, there is also other scriptures that I want to read to you um, just let me open here maybe you know um, James 5 verse 14 and 15 we say see ye, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him all right someone that's sick anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of the faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven Wow so come to the apostles or the men of God let they lay their hands on them we say a prophetic action but anoint them also with oil all right now oil is symbolism of the Holy Spirit so um, we have this oil bottles we will come um, we will pray over them that when this oil touch the people that this oil will do something spiritually for the people so um, it, it's powerful um, I felt when some great men of God lay their hands on me and anointed in my lifetime with oil something was transferred upon me I could feel power flowing through that and um, so we have the laying of hands we have the coming of and um, bringing sick people or people that needs to be separated for the Lord anoint them with oil we have the Lord's Supper that is a also symbolism and manifest um, prophetic manifestation what we are doing all right um, to bring life to people and it's dangerous things all right all these things are very dangerous as well to do it not in the right heart of man so that was James 5 um, then baptism we have in Acts 2 verse 41 so those who received the word were baptized Oh, but the word of God is powerful and people came to the Lord. Yes, but they are also baptized in water. And they were added that day about 3,000 souls. So baptism is another prophetic thing that we believe we died with Christ. We will go into the water and as we come out, we are raised. I had the experience when I was baptized as a young boy spiritually something entered me um, something happened to me there was a power release upon me when I was baptized my life changed although I was born again already where my life was changing um, something happened with the water baptism as well so water baptism as um, amazing power behind it and it's the same with the anointing oil so we have seen here that the supper of the Lord the laying of hands the anointing oil you know water baptism is is so powerful prophetic actions that the church needs to do it's not only natural things it is spiritual things but it's connected to a natural world the Lord made it that way so there's things that the prophets knew of the old that when you do this prophetic thing that will release the glory of God you remember when the king was sick and Elijah told the king to go and wash him seven times. He was a uh, malad, you know, full of sauce and what is malad now um, in English. He had to go and wash him seven times. And um, there, there happened something of that king. 
he lived for many years, if I can remember, 15 years still, because of his obedience to the prophet's voice when he said to him, go and wash you in the, in the Jordan. So, we have things, you know, even the washing of feet. Let's maybe read that as well a little bit. Um, let me see here. So, in John 13, verse 14, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I've done for you. Verily I tell you, no servant is greater than the master, nor the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now I know that there is many people that will maybe use the Lord's Supper, no power, because their heart's not in it and they do not really believe what they are doing. They will use anointing oil, the laying of hands, the going through baptism. How many people that we not baptized that are back in the world um, that did not really focus on the power of it, um, but they do not know that the Lord's eyes and judgment is on that because they do these things without truly faith and um, their lives is falling apart because you cannot play with these things now I know there's people that is washing of feet you know um, because it's just a traditional thing you can do all these things at traditionals and there's no power really in it but you get people that truly believe that those time when the people walked their feet were dirty and the Lord saw it as a service but but there is a spiritual thing as well when your feet is clean your body is clean because Jesus did it that way he would come and say come I want to wash your feet I want to be a servant he understood the power of it and when your feet are clean the whole body is clean so there is a spiritual thing also connected to that when you walk on this earth your natural way um, is clean actually your whole life will be clean but the prophetic manifestation of washing the feet and you know the power of it so they come come people to me and I will feel in my heart, you know, I'm going to wash your feet. And as I'm going to do that, God is going to do something supernaturally for your whole life. You will not be the same now because I'm washing your feet. So there can be a spiritual awesome connection of your spiritual washing or your natural washing of feet that happened to your spiritual life when you go here. You can do everything without power, but you can do much things with power. So we have seen the Lord's Supper, oil, water, very important because there's a baptism of, you know, of people and also the washing of feet and stuff so we have now these things there is prophets all over the world that will do prophetic actions but will be devastated to the church things that doesn't make sense they will maybe in South Africa they was a prophet that let people go outside and eat grass as a prophetic action and spraying people with doom you know doom is an insect um, killing insect um, you know poison spraying with doom for killing demons and stuff upon people 
let people drink jig water or throwing coke and fanta on people's head you know and stuff like that i believe that we can go a little bit too far and missing the thing um now I know that God would say to the prophets of the Old Testament to do strange things but that was Old Testament to show something about the relationship that God had with Israel in those days alright so maybe it will be strange in our ears but the New Testament God has changed it a little bit because God became flesh and he gave his life to mankind and he doesn't want man to be humili humiliated or um, we want people to when we say them to do something I believe it will be connected with these five things you know water drink water you will be healed, be baptized, walk through water. Um, I know of a great man of God that built a bath and said to the people, um, they must walk through it and miracles will start happening. And once a month they did that and it was so powerful manifestation, prophetic manifestation, you know, but it's something that at love people it's not um, shaming people prophets here in Africa that will take out their belts you know and hit the people and uh, you know cutting people's hair and do all kinds of stuff like kissing the ladies um, um, putting your hands on the ladies um, you don't must not do that and they all feel that they can do as they are pleased but there is a line that we cannot cross when we are prophets thinking that that will have a spiritual effect and the Lord said this so the Lord will never bring a shame um, to the church or to the people and there will truly be a manifestation of God's holiness and glory and not a fleshly thing so I believe the apostles of today the, the people that God called to teach they must focus and judge these things if there is prophets that will do something like that that brings distraction they must tell and say this is not of God but many things I believe when God will use normal things I've seen you know that great men of God would take off their jackets and that is a manifestation of the glory of God and will lay upon someone's you know upon someone and the glory of God will fall upon that man because there is a covering of the glory of God that is upliftment that is good that is showing God's clothing upon man and um, maybe it is you know things that we do not understand um, prayer cloths prayer cloths is one of those awesome things um, I know of um, David Hogan what a man of God he will let when he preach he will let people bring their clothing in front of him and it will lay heaps in front of him like, almost like a river or a mountain and as he preach um, God's spirit and God's wonders will go in this clothing and people will go and 
take it to their home or to the sick ones and stuff and God will do signs, miracles and wonders, awesome things but this is not someone that is just speaking that's truly men of God that loves God that gave his life and to the gospel and to the Lord Jesus Christ and there's truly an awesome manifestation when he does things like that um, prayer cloths laying in front of the church and people walking over it and God is doing something I remember as a small boy um, we had a preacher that he had a wind tunnel on he calls it a wind tunnel but it is men of God that would walk with him and they were stood like this in the front of the church and all the congregation needs to go um, as they are praying in tongues and stuff it's a manifestation and the people will went through and as they went through the Holy Spirit will just touch the people's hearts the power of God will come upon men and um, people are getting healed and filled with the Holy Spirit and His power and deliverance and stuff so you get that one of the greatest meetings I've ever felt when I I, I evangelist had a, a lot of flowers in front of the church and he said that this flower as he minister represent our lives we must come and take that flower after the service and then we must say Lord this is my life and I will break it before you oh boy I've never felt something so tangible in my whole life what I've done in a practical world spiritual happen I believe when I took that rose and I break it I could feel how I break something inside of my spirit in my belly I break something I could hear it I could feel it and I was instantly filled by the spirit of God um, crying and laughing and God that awesome miracles that day by doing that so it's beautiful things it is um, uplifting it is helping the church um, when we do clean stuff and not this um, I'm doing you know throwing coca-cola on your head and there you go and um, people eating grass and stuff you know nothing happened to them that is just bringing people to shame and the church to shame so prophetic actions remember we become the arrows of God that are shoot and he wants to use every one of us and then we declare spiritual words upon all these manifestations what we are doing in front of God when we do that it's instead of prayer but it's powerful but we have a prayer life we have a relationship with the Lord it's just we don't have time now God wants us to do this and as you're doing that God is bringing deliverance and freedom with that specific thing so things changed but I believe there is a lost art because not many churches in the New Testament are doing things because they do not always believe in these things but it's true it's true truly you know maybe you have a glass of water and you say to it I bless this water as I drink it it's the holy the holy it's holy water I'm going to be healed and you do that God can do that 
as well something special for you but it must be God and you must believe it and it can be only I people can do it by traditions and then missing it you know there's churches that do prophetic actions like snakes I don't believe that and that's not good um, because a snake bite Paul once it's not a prophetic action it happened because he throw some wood on you know and a snake came on the when he throw wood on the fire and bit him he just shook it off um, it was not because of prophetic action and now people have snakes giving it in the church and if the snake bites you you don't have faith um, I think that is just stupid as a man of God um, that's not the Holy Spirit coming upon people and set people free and deliver people and healing people there must be a purpose for the prophetic action um, you can have maybe a purse your your purse is empty and you need some money and the Lord says bring your purse to me and you can lay your purse in front of a congregation and people are praying, praying over it or a contract that you are busy with in bringing contracts to the church and the preacher and the people lay their hands on it and declare deliverance of the Lord over it it's almost like shooting, you know, the arrow out of the thing. But I believe the Holy Spirit will lead us and help us and see what we need to do. There can be things that we do instead of prayer. But it must be from God. It must be scriptural. It must truly bring honor to God and man glorify man glorify the gospel show truly the manifestation of God's glory in that doesn't help the testimony will be come back God did awesome things and you will know that it's not fake because in the spiritual world there is many fakeness a uh, religious world have many fake things in the spiritism they use things like you know um, maybe put a candle um, light a candle and do a curse or a chant and things will happen but God has given us the power and he wants us to rule and um, as we pray with the Lord and stay with the Lord and honors the Lord and the Lord maybe tell you to build a, a bath in your church where people can walk through uh, or something um, let's do it but we will see the glory of God in that so prophetic manifestations you are the manifestation of the prophetic God says there will be a son and now you are the manifestation and then you can act things out to confess what God did on the cross like the supper like everything or you can come and bring something all right like your tithes and offerings to the Lord and God will bless you because of that manifestation that you are doing now the laying of hands of the apostles and the prophets and really men of God will do something for you by acting prophetic it is something to testify about and to do it practically and to give something past present and future bring things in 
together so may this word bless you today and um, be blessed in Jesus name Amen